here. Awesome. Welcome to another exciting session of Rachel Mazza's Office Hours for the Advertorial Training Program. Today we're going to dive into some questions. We can look at some examples. Um, as you come in, go ahead and stick your questions in the Q&A. Okay, so we're going to dive into the first question, which is from Giancarlo. And we talked about this last office hour. So if you guys haven't seen the replay from that, you can get it on my YouTube uh, channel. Just go to YouTube and type in Rachel Mazza or Rachel Mazza Copywriter. I'll pop up and you'll see all the office hours there because there's really good examples. And Giancarlo, if you are still struggling with headlines, then I suggest you go watch that replay because there's some awesome examples in that one. But let's dive into your question here. Um, Giancarlo says, does your advertorial headline, uh, oh, I think that's, a, oh yeah, this is, this is what we were expanding on from last week. Does your advertorial headline need a big idea like a headline from a sales letter? So the answer is yes. It's great if your headline has a big idea, right? And we wanna remember that advertorials are more like editorial content than they are a sales letter. So we don't want the headline to be selling something specific like a product or anything, but we do want the, the headline to be selling the, the content that you're going to write, right? So just like anything, you've got to fight for attention. Uh, people are over-marketed to, I see so many ads and so much content every day. They're completely overwhelmed, have information overwhelm. So you have to sell your content just like you were selling a product. So when you, when you form your headline for your advertorial, you don't necessarily want to have the product be promoted in the headline but you do want to tease what's inside. You want to drive, uh, create curiosity. You want to entice people to click by making a big promise or uh, promising some big payoff that they'll get if they read the content. So that might be a piece of value. Uh, it might be uh, learning to do something. It might be um, the, uh, uh, uncovering the solution to their problem. So you don't want to be too specific on the, the offer itself because people aren't quite at that awareness level where they're looking for a specific offer, but they are looking for solutions and information and um, trying to find out more. So that's what you wanna tease in your headline. So for example, um, it could also be something that interrupts people's way of thinking to get them curious enough to click, right? So that is what we call in copywriting a pattern interrupt. And that's something that gets people to stop and say, wait, what? And then they're like, oh wait, I have to check that out. And then they go check it out. So for example, that's, uh, like having an authority figure say something completely opposite to what you think they'd say. For example, you could say um, things like um, why personal trainers recommend not losing weight this Christmas or something like that, right? And maybe it's all about how uh, you'll actually find it a lot easier to lose weight if you just pick one day and indulge and go crazy and then get back on the wagon the next day. Maybe that's the solution that they're offering. But saying it that way, personal trainers say, do not try to lose weight this Christmas. You're like, wait, what? Because personal trainers literally have the job of trying to get you to lose weight, right? So that's one example of a pattern interrupt, a way that you could use those headlines for your advertorial. Maybe the offer in that situation would be either personal training or an online course, or maybe a mindset course around weight loss, stuff like that. That's stuff that you could easily tie back to that type of, type of offer, right? So Another example of headlines that you could use for advertorials would be something that calls out exactly what's on your audience's mind, right? So you want them to feel like you're listening in at their dinner table, that you wrote this exactly for them. They want to say, whoa, I feel like this was written just for me, right? And of course, that's all about doing your research, uh, actually listening into their conversations, whether that's in person, in Facebook groups, by interviewing past customers, uh, reading reviews and testimonials online. Um, you just want this to not be too salesy again, right? Because most of the time, advertorials are meant for more unaware audiences. And so you don't want to blatantly announce that you're selling something. Um, and it, an exception might be if you're uh, using an advertorial as an in-between step for a, a warmer market. So for example, when uh, financial publishers a lot of times do this, they'll send people from their list to an advertorial uh, if they need to give more information about a very complex or very expensive offer. Those kinds of people would know that there's an offer coming because that's what they're on the list for, right? But normally, advertorials are for cold audiences, skeptical audiences, and you're not going to be selling your offer blatantly up front. So again, you just want to match the medium 
And so whether it's a newspaper, or you want it to look like a newspaper article, if it's a blog post, you want it to look like a blog post and feel like a blog post, and you want to make sure you're meeting your customer where they're at, meaning at that particular awareness level. So if they're not quite ready to buy, you're not trying to shove them towards the sale, right? Um, and if you guys have follow-up questions about this stuff as we're talking about it, absolutely just stick it in the Q&A and we'll dive into it. All right, so next question here. Um, oh, this one's from Giancarlo about the headlines. So where can I get ideas for headlines to use in my editorial that feel newsworthy? So that's a great idea. So we just talked about a couple of examples of how to form advertorials, right? But how do you find examples to get inspiration? So if you want to find ideas for news, newsworthy headlines, I suggest looking at the news. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, one of my favorite places to get headlines is actually tabloids. So when you're sitting in the supermarket and you're waiting to check out with your, your broccoli and your milk and your eggs, you usually see all those publications on the rack by the checkout line, right? And they've all got salacious, uh, sensational headlines, something like George Clooney abducted by aliens and returned, or like Prince Harry secretly wears dresses or whatever it is, right? They're ridiculous headlines and you look at them, you're like, that's ridiculous. But you're also like, I kind of want to read that, <laughs> right? And so it's, it's, it's enticing, it drives curiosity. And the reason that we're drawn to those is because they're interesting, they drive curiosity and they make a big promise. They, they, they promise to pay off with something that you'll get if you read them. You're gonna find out what happened to George Clooney uh, when he was abducted by aliens. And you're gonna find out why Prince Harry is wearing dresses, right? They promise this big payoff. And so you can do the same thing when looking for advertorials online. But I recommend uh, checking out news articles, uh, checking out those tabloids. That is great inspiration for advertorial headlines. So you can do the same thing online with online publications. So go to Daily Mail, go to BuzzFeed, those two are really good because those are going to be a lot of sensational headlines. They're more tabloidy type publications, right? So Daily Mail, BuzzFeed, they've all got that clickbait goodness where it really just entices people to buy. Uh, the difference between clickbait and a really great headline is that clickbait, it's bait, but it doesn't really pay off, right? So you don't want to trick people to reading something that you're not going to uh, pay off what you promised. So clickbait is when you promise something big and then you don't pay off, but just a great headline is when you promise something big that people really want to know about, and then you actually pay up when they read the article and give them what you promised. So Daily Mail, BuzzFeed, Wired, Business Inc., uh, The Guardian, um, all, those, all those places are great places to get ideas for your advertorial headlines. Um, because remember, ever, the advertorials are supposed to fit with the medium, right? So wherever you're publishing it, you want people to be able to mistake your advertorial for a piece of content that you would normally find in that publication. And so they don't always have to be sensational headlines either, and sometimes they shouldn't be. For example, if you're publishing to um, a more conservative or, or not conservative in, in political sense, but more like a, a laid back publication that's not very tabloidy, if you had a really sensational headline, where it was like way over the top, that would look out of place there, right? So you wanna adapt to the medium and the place where your advertorial is being published. And you want to emulate or, or mimic what the actual headlines are doing in that particular publication. So you want someone to be able to mistake your advertorial for just another article in that publication. So um, a good example is like, where did I go earlier? Oh, I just went to Google News. So if you just open up Google and click the News tab, you can open up some, some articles, right? Um, so here, let me, let me do this and I'll actually share my screen. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen here. This is one I found earlier, right before we jumped on, but um, here's how I found this, is I just went to Google. I literally just Googled Google News. Um, and clicked on Google News and then just started looking through headlines, right? So I just clicked on one and I'll, I'll just pick up the one that I clicked earlier. Um, it's just a news article about the current election and what's going on in, in the current administration. And so it doesn't really matter what you pick as long as it's something that your audience would read who you would want to be reading your advertorial. Sorry. Music going. There we go. 
Um, so if we scroll down, we're going to see here's paid links. So these are ads, right? Or these are headlines. These are headlines for advertorial. So best, best exercise to lose stomach fat, top seven stocks to buy, uh, Warren Buffett top stocks. We've got authority. We've got um, an, a listicle. We've got listicles and how to, right? So these are all advertorials and they're all making a promise about something that, that they're going to pay off in this article, right? So let's see what else we got here. Paid content. So this is smart feed. This is one of those content networks like taboola.com, outbrain.com, adblade.com. Smart feed's another one that I don't know too much about, but I've seen it around. They're all very similar. But here's where you can get some good ideas for headlines. So here's interesting. We just got a ticket yesterday because our license plate sticker is uh, expired. It, they're supposed to send it to us, but they haven't. And so we got a ticket yesterday. And so now I'm seeing this and it's really relevant top of mind. I don't know if it's because Google's most likely spying on me and knows about this stuff, but uh, I'm seeing this and I'm like, oh, something about the new policy for cars using less than 50 miles. Oh, could that, could that mean that I don't have to pay my ticket if that's the new policy? You know what I mean? So this is top of mind for me. They're calling out and I'm like, oh, that was written just for me, right? So Florida launches new policy for cars used less than 50 miles per day. So that's interesting. I don't drive a lot. I work from home and I just had this situation. So that's a really good example of, of a great headline for me that I would want to click on that and read. Um, I also have a Mac and Google obviously knows that, right? So this advertorial advertiser is obviously choosing parameters for the audiences that they're going to show this stuff to. Um, this says one clever trick most Mac owners don't know, do it today. I would improve this. I would say like, don't know for what there's no benefit here right yeah it's i'm a mac user and like maybe i don't know everything about it but i think this is a crappy headline i think that they could improve it by offering a benefit or a promise there's no promise right so just because you see everything out there doesn't mean everything works as well so just keep that in mind as you're looking through this stuff um so these are all paid right so medicare 2020 chocolate.com these are all advertorials. So born into billions, meet America's richest heirs. That's like super interesting tabloidy stuff that I would want to know. I'd be like, oh, who's the, who's the rich people? And it's a forinvesting.com. Um, I live in Florida. I don't need Medicare, but they're targeting me. That's a, there's a good chance if I'm living in Florida, I might, right? Um, this is intrigue, right? So she's the richest royal and hardly known. And it's for chocolate.com. I don't know what they're, they're selling. Um, I won't click them now because I'm guessing it's going to create like an explosion of ads and things on my, on my site, but you can, you know, I'll put this in the chat. You can go here and start clicking on, on the stuff yourself if you want and see where these lead. I'll do that right now. See where these lead and see what those articles are, are saying and, and how they're relating back to the offer, right? So these are just some good examples here. I mean, we could, this is endless. You could go through any of these. So if you guys want to dive into anything that we're talking about here more specifically, use that form. Yeah, you can get it in the Kajabi, um, uh, in your training dashboard, or just email support at rachelmansa.com and ask us for it. We'll send it to you. If there's anything you want to dig into specifically as we're going through this stuff, please submit it through there because that way I can make sure to pull up all the links and close all the ads ahead of time and we can do more breakdowns and stuff. Right? So just some good examples here. Um, cool. So to wrap that up, emulating headlines is pretty simple where the real strategy comes in is tying it back to your offer, right? So tying that awesome headline back to your offer. And I've got a lot of lessons about that on my blog, on my website. Um, we also cover it in the advertorial course. Um, I forget what, which module, maybe module two, I think, but there's lots of ways to transition back to your offer by connecting two seemingly unrelated ideas together creatively. Um, cool. Yeah, Giancarlo, you want to come on the call? I can let you on. Let me pull this up. Okay, you should be able to turn on your audio now. Can you hear me? Unmute. Oh, I got to unmute you. Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Hi. Sorry. Can, can you hear me well? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. 
Yeah, I got so many windows open. Uh, there is some some uh, something playing in the background. I don't even know what, what window it is. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> That's why I didn't open up all the advertorials. I knew that would happen to me. <laughs> yes. Um, so my question is, I know I, I am so obsessed about advertorials because I know that's the most effective way, you know, to convert coal into, into hot traffic. But my question is like, how much, let's say if I, the, for the headline, right? I know yeah. I asked you before, like, sorry. No worries. I know it's distracting when you got sound going in the background. To close a window here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, so, like, I know, it, I mean, there's like a special, a specific formula. So the headline, uh, the, uh, the headline for the Victoria doesn't look or feel like a, like a sales letter. Um, like, uh, yeah, yeah, you already say it, right? Yeah, you already, you talk about it already. Mm -hmm. But can I just refer to like a swap file, let's say for uh, Eugene Swan or some type of uh, swap files like from like that, or it have to be like from a news web website? No, absolutely. If you have really good sales letter headlines that that you know work well, that will still attract uh, people to read the yeah. article. So the way I like to think of it is they call this the waterfall technique where the, the pre-headline, the goal is to get you to read the headline. And the headline, the goal is to reach you, get you to read the head subheadline. The subheadline gets you to read the first paragraph of the lead and so on and so forth, right? So if you think of it that way, you can switch the agenda of the next piece whenever you're ready to. So if the goal of the headline is just to get you to read the article, that's, that's great. So if, if, you're, if the headline gets you to read the article, the headline is a success, right? If it brings right. the right people to read your article. So where I would change it up is a lot of sales letter headlines are gonna mention a product name or, or say like that you're gonna sell something. So I would just tweak that and make it a little bit more vague. So a little bit more curiosity inducing. So instead of saying right. uh, this magic fidget spinner fixes all your sleep and anxiety products, you say this uh, tiny tool worth $2 fixes all okay. your, your, your problems, right? And so that way you're creating a little bit of intrigue and getting people to be like, ooh, I need to click that and see what that is, rather than right. So, it right out. So it doesn't look, it doesn't look like, a, oh, one headline, the Victoria headline looks like the sales letter headline, so it doesn't feel like, oh, it's more of the same. You know what right. I'm talking about? So- Oh, so, oh, I see. So yeah, I would, um, you yeah, that's can, what I mean. You can use the same headline. I would tweak it a little bit, but it's actually good if they're very similar because that's what creates congruency, right? So oh, if okay. the ad is very similar to the advertorial, is very similar to the sales page, that's going to create this congruent experience. So every time someone clicks to the next piece of the funnel, they're going to land on that page and say, oh, this is where I belong. This, is, this looks oh, like I see where okay. I was trying to go. So that's good. So right, of course okay. you don't want to just repeat because you want fresh content to keep people hopping and hopping, but right. they can absolutely use the same vocabulary, the same elements, and just tweak it slightly for whatever you want them to do on that page. Right. So the pictorial headline would be more kind of more subtle, more indirect, right? Right. Right. And so okay. usually when you do your advertorial, if they click through to the next page, they're looking for something else, right? So let's say, um, like if I was selling Copy Chief, maybe uh, the advertorial is all about this uh, secret place where the best copywriters go to master their craft. And then um, if someone, if maybe like in the advertorial I've highlighted uh, best community for copywriters, and if someone clicks that, they wanna go find the best community for copywriters, then um, the sales page headline could be something like, like uh, Copy Chief, uh, widely known as the best community for copywriters, right? So, so you just want, the headline for the next one to pay off what you just promised in the previous right. one. Uh, and what about the lead? It should be like there is because I know uh, like the lead for the sales page is recommended two to three fingers, two to three inches, I think, like long. Uh, what about for an editorial? It should be like just one line, two paragraphs, one paragraph, how, how much? 
I definitely see it's more common to have editorials be shorter because they're bite-sized pieces that uh, just want to get people ready to hear your sales message, right? So um, I don't like to say like, oh, it's going to be two paragraphs. It's going to be one paragraph. And even with sales letters, because I think it's as long as it needs to be to get the, uh -huh. the message across and get people in the right mindset to be ready for the next piece of your sales funnel. So I don't want to say it's a one paragraph, two paragraphs, because I think that's, that's you're going to hurt yourself if you're always like trying to fit it, squeeze it into the, the, the template. But right. um, I do think the editorials tend to be shorter because you have to remember these are cold audiences, skeptical audiences who don't really want what you have to say until you put them in the mindset to be curious about what you have. And so if there's, a, there's a greater chance that you'll lose them and they'll click away. So you kind of want to get to the meat as quickly as possible so that, that they stick around and, and want to learn more. Okay, last question. Um, can, you, can you like get away and sell high ticket products just with an editorial piece? I've definitely seen it done. Um, actually, I see this all the time with uh, uh, copywriters do this or consultants do this, uh, where they say something like um, how one man disrupted a $10,000 billion, billion dollar consulting industry, things like that, right? So the story-based stuff I find really powerful if you just want to have an editorial. The only thing is you probably do want to have some sort of landing page or sales page especially if you're using an advertorial that's published in a third party, because you're not going to be able to control the conversions, the funnels and track everything. Right. So you probably do want some sort of landing page, but if your advertorial is doing really well uh, or really well designed, you could just use that as your main sales mechanism for sure. You just lose a little bit of control there. And so right. I think without, that... without the need to send the, sending them to a webinar or, or a sales video. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I see Dollar Shave Club do this all the time. They're a great example. Um, yeah, yeah. You definitely don't need a webinar or a, a massive sales page. But again, it depends. If it's a really high ticket item, people might need more information. But if you've created this awesome story about the guy running the high ticket offer, you're selling like the access to the, the guy or something, then maybe the story is enough and you can put enough proof elements in there because it's all about proof, right? People are right. skeptical. They don't believe you when you say things. And so if you can just get them to believe you, that's all you need. And so if you've got enough proof, for example, if um, let's say you're trying to sell someone like, like the best consulting for women, if you have Oprah on there, on your advertorial saying, this is the best woman consultant in the world, that's probably enough, right? So it's just how much proof do you need to get people to believe you? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks for asking questions. And yeah, if you guys have more questions, absolutely um, stick them in the form because we'll, we can dive into this stuff next week as well. Um, okay, cool. Thanks, Giancarlo. Great questions. Really good questions. All right, so I've got about five minutes and then I got to jump on a call. So if you guys have more questions, Claudia's got a question. Okay, so Claudia says, I looked for examples of pet care advertorials um, and haven't found much. Where would I go other than the list of ones I've already been to? Um, I see pet care advertorials all the time. So I will start sending them to you. Um, I, would, I don't want to take up too much time because I'll, I'll dig around. So I see things like, I see these, I see them all the time. I'll start sending you editorials, Claudia. Uh, things like, like a lot, of a lot of stuff related to dry food being bad or like crappy food. And like, this is what you should feed your pet for a long and healthy life. So a lot of stuff like that. I see a lot of um, behavioral stuff. So like how to get your dog to stop barking. And now that I'm saying this into the computer, I'm probably gonna get flooded with them, right? So I will start posting them and then I'll save a couple so that we can dive into them on our next office hours call. Uh, Cause I, I don't have a, I don't have a pet right now. So I just click away and I don't think about it, but I do see them all the time. A lot of behavioral stuff, how to get your dog to stop barking, that kind of stuff. Um, how to deal with your dog's anxiety, things like that during quarantine. Um, and a lot related to their food, like how the fresh food companies I see using this a lot. So if there's like a, a company that does like raw foods, like they'll send you like actual like meat, right? Um, or that, or fresh food type stuff. I, not the canned stuff, but like actual like boutique food services for pets. I see them use avatars all the time. So I'd start Googling uh, fresh, fresh pet food or like 
raw pet food, things like that, and start looking at those companies. And I bet if you land on their sites within a couple of days, you'll start getting retargeted with their ads and advertorials too. But I'll keep an eye out for some examples as well and uh, make it a point so we can dive into that uh, next on our next office hours call. Cool. All right. Well, thank you guys. Um, outside of Claudia's ex um, ask for pet care examples for advertorials, which we will do next time. If anyone has any questions, then just stick them in that form for the office hours. We'll make sure to dive into them. You are always welcome to come on camera or on audio like Giancarlo did, and we can chat through it. That's what this is here for. So I will see you guys next time. Have a wonderful week and keep writing. See you guys.